In our testing today, we're going to learn why AMD probably turned overclocking off for the 5800X3D natively. And that's because we're testing a new feature from MSI that the company is calling Combo Strike, which is supposed to finally allow some form of basically overclocking by circumventing the built-in protections of the 5800X3D and forcing the clocks higher in order to get a little bit more performance out of it, or at least that's what is supposed to be happening. Today we're going to be benchmarking Combo Strike, which again, it's just an exclusive MSI feature, but we normally review on Gigabyte boards, so we have some baseline data to compare against and see if it's actually helping anything. Let's get started. Before that, this video is brought to you by the HardwareBot Overclocking Competition. HardwareBot is currently running an OC competition to get new people interested in the overclocking scene and to reignite that interest from people who've been doing it a long time. To do so, it's offering a huge prize pool. It has lots of CPUs, cash prizes, and it's leveling the playing field. Everything short of liquid nitrogen is allowed, making this an exciting opportunity for enthusiasts who don't have access to more expensive XOC gear and liquid nitrogen. HardwareBot's OC Challenge is a great time to learn more about overclocking, and it's linked in the description below. Check it out. So quick notes for Combo Strike. It does actually help performance a little bit, but only sometimes. And it's a little bit flawed in the execution because there are three different levels of Combo Strike, including off. This is accessed through the advanced CPU settings menu in BIOS. So you go to BIOS, you go to basically where the overclock settings normally are, you go to advanced CPU, and then there it is. For disabled, that's obvious, it's just not on. For level one, it's supposed to be the lowest impact, and level three is supposed to be the highest performance uplift on the CPU. And this is basically only a 5800X3D feature uh, because you cannot do normal overclocking with it unless you use some kind of workaround or hack, basically to force the clocks higher and unlock it a bit. So there can be an uplift sometimes, as we'll show in our testing, but when you start really digging in and looking at vCore and TDI thermals on the CPU, power consumption, it's clear where the cost is coming from. It's those three things. Now we'd normally do our AMD CPU test for our reviews on a Gigabyte X570 Master. And that means we can compare that existing data against MSIs for a couple of things. One of them, obviously, frequency scaling. And then the other one is just actual performance in gaming and in production applications. Now, in theory, this feature should help in production applications more than it would help in gaming. Because if it's basically just boosting the clocks a little bit, whatever they can squeeze out of the 5800X3D before actually overvolting it to be in dangerous territory, then uh, the impact will be most noticeable when you're running an all-core workload for an extended period of time. So that's where we expect to see the most gain. Enough of that, let's get into some of our lab's testing data and see how the 5800X3D does on the MSI boards with Combo Strike. We are using the X570 ACE for this, which has the feature in the newest UEFI. It is technically a, a beta right now, and it shows. You should probably wait to download it. But uh, they also have this feature available on some other boards like the Godlike and the Unify. The first test we're going to do for this is power testing. So we're going to take our CPU over there and run some benchmarks on it because this will help us analyze if there's actually anything different happening on the CPU because anything, frequency, voltage, it should all show up in power consumption. If they're bumping the frequency and doing other tweaks to CPU performance, it's very likely that that is accompanied with a voltage increase. And since it's all just P equals VI anyway for watts, the number one way we identify if there's something different happening in a CPU is by simply checking for the power numbers. So let's look at that. Testing at the EPS 12 volt cables with our lab test equipment, we're able to get power numbers as close to the CPU as possible without actually wiring into the board itself. The 5800X3D on our standardized gigabyte board for our original review pulled 108 watts with the MSI board baseline at 99 watts. They're running different voltages for vCore, so that's where that nine watts or so comes from, other than VRM efficiency losses. The MSI Combo Strike Level 3, the most aggressive one, increases power consumption by about six watts over the default Combo Strike off setting on MSI. That's not error, and it is a real difference. The Level 1 result was 112 watts, though, so it's about a 12 watt increase, for something that shouldn't actually be producing that much of a performance difference. In other words, 12% more power for probably nothing. Something is clearly happening with these settings that shouldn't be, and we'll be looking into that. For the full comparative power chart, you can check our original 5800X3D review or 
any of our other recent CPU reviews, if you want to see where Intel and other AMD CPUs land. The next place we need to look is frequency, because frequency is the most likely place for a difference in power consumption to actually be realized, and it's probably where the extra performance would be coming from if there is any, because there's not much else you can really do, really. The Gigabyte board that we ran our review with held the 5800X 3D at about 4300 megahertz to 4320 megahertz when under an all-core workload rendering a Blender animation. The MSI board's stock result was 4200 megahertz flat, so it's already starting in a behind position compared to the Gigabyte board that we used. And that's without Gigabyte running its own name brand Combo Strike feature. Running level 3 shows that this actually works. The 5800X 3D is now above the Gigabyte board for frequency, about 4430 MHz, or a 230 MHz increase over MSI baseline just for one toggle. The level 1 result had MSI equaling the Gigabyte board here. Now we get to see what the downsides are for that frequency increase. Boosting the frequency basically always requires a V-core increase. Not always, always, but most of the time. And boosting voltage comes with a cost. With CPUs, that cost is traditionally thermal, and obviously power comes with that. So, thermal is what we're looking next. Here's what that cost is. The stock Gigabyte board ran T-Dye, or the average dye temperature, of about 80 degrees Celsius under our Arctic Liquid Freezer 2, 360 cooler, at max fan speeds, and auto board settings. That means auto voltage as well. So we didn't control V-Core because that is one of the things that MSI is changing here. Gigabyte has historically been on the high side for default voltage as well. The MSI board held steady state at 77 degrees Celsius over ambient, so it's cooler and outside of variance because we control ambient for every single second of the test, but it's also in line with the lower frequency. The Combo Strike 3 setting held at about 78.3 degrees, with the Combo Strike 1 setting skyrocketing to 82 degrees Celsius just comparatively to baseline. As for voltage, the Gigabyte board ran at a steady and constant 1.248 V-Core, which is fairly high. The stock MSI board ran at a significantly lower 1.21 volts, at least as far as stock out-of-box settings are concerned, it's a pretty big change, with the Combo Strike Level 3 voltage fluctuating between 1.20 and 1.21 volts. The Combo Strike Level 1 voltage launched to 1.244 volts, a relatively stratospheric jaunt by comparison to Combo Strike 3, which is the one that will actually provide uplift. Now, most likely, this is showing us a problem with whatever lookup tables MSI is programming into its UEFI or its BIOS, where it's just fetching the wrong piece of data. So one BIOS update should fix whatever's going on here. So that explains what it's doing. The rest should just be housekeeping work to prove the performance of the CPU. And for this testing, we're removing all the other CPUs from our charts and just leaving only the 5800X 3D and the Combo Strike variants on those charts, including the original Gigabyte result. If you want to see the rest of the CPUs, like from Intel or AMD's other options for competitive choicing, then you should look at our 10100 revisit or our 5800X 3D review. Those are two of the most recent pieces we've done that would include the data for every else. But let's get started with some production benchmarks because that's where it's most likely to show a positive side for this feature before we get into the gaming stuff where it becomes evident that it's a little less useful. Blender Cycles rendering will give Combo Strike the best chance of showing a difference because the frequency gain is multiplied across all cores in a consistent workload. Here's the chart. The Gigabyte board we reviewed required 16.7 minutes to complete the render, while the MSI stock result took 17.1 minutes. That means Gigabyte starts off with a 2% lower time to render, which is noteworthy when we're talking just board differences. The Combo Strike feature got MSI equal with Gigabyte when at level 1, but the voltage is clearly broken at this level, at least compared to level 3. Combo Strike level 3 boosts it to 16.2 minutes to complete, a 5.3% reduction from MSI's stock result. Now, that's actually not bad for a start, but it will get a lot more boring than that as we get into games. This is also a 3% reduction from the Gigabyte board, so it's a somewhat real result. In 7-zip compression testing, the 5800X 3D on MSI's stock settings completed 93.6 thousand MIPS, or millions of instructions per second. The Gigabyte board slightly outdid that by 1.2%, and the Combo Strike 3 result improved by 3.3% over MSI's stock result. That's up to 96,000 MIPS now. Level 1 is between, as we would expect from the name and the frequency, but again, not the voltage. In decompression, the lineup is about the same. The 121K MIPS result of level 3 improved its rank over stock by 5%, or 3% over gigabyte stock result. 
In Chromium code compile testing, the gigabyte result required 81.8 .8 minutes to complete a compile, outdoing MSI's stock result by 1.6%. The Combo Strike 3 result jumped ahead to 79.6 minutes, which is a 4% improvement over MSI's stock result, or 2.7% over Gigabyte. And now we move on to the less meaningful results. In Counter-Strike Go, the highest performer was the Gigabyte board from our original review, up at 347 FPS average, and with 1% lows at 233 and 0.1% lows at 154 FPS. And as a reminder, these are the representations that we popularized in reviews for frame time pacing. Combo Strike Level 3 got MSI up to about the same level at 346 FPS average and with nearly identical lows, but the stock MSI board ran at 344 FPS average, allowing Combo Strike 3 a lead of almost one full percentage point, so the Level 1 result remains suspect and we'll keep an eye on that. In F1 2021 at 1080p, there isn't much deviation between these results. The 5800X3D on Gigabyte ran at 354 FPS average, with the Combo Strike and MSI results all within error. Remember, this game is in the high hundreds of frames per second, so an extra 1 FPS isn't anything we can declare a victory. These are within run-to-run -run error and variance, and even if we had test resolution down to 1 FPS out of 350, it's just irrelevant. In Total War at 1080p, the 5800X3D Gigabyte result ran at 216 FPS average, with lows at 167 and 149 FPS. The Combo Strike 3 result had MSI at 216 FPS average and roughly equal lows, theoretically boosting it above the 215 FPS average result of the stock MSI board, but again, we're basically with an error here, so it's hard to declare a victory. The feature just isn't worth it in these games. In Far Cry 6, the 5800X3D on Gigabyte ran nearly 1% better than on MSI boards, with Combo Strike doing nothing of note. Level 1 and Level 3 were the same. And we'll just save everyone's time here and stop on GTA 5, even though we have more games. GTA 5, it's the same thing. They're all the same. There's no deviation to speak of. So the only place we really saw a difference was in some of those production workloads. So wrapping up then, Combo Strike Level 1 clearly has something wrong with it. We didn't bother with 2, honestly, because when you look at the Combo Strike Level 3 versus just completely turned off, there's not even a point in testing anything in between. Uh, we looked at it enough to verify that it would be below level 3 and above level 1 in theory. But level 1 has an issue where the V-Core is simply too high for what the frequency actually is, and it doesn't make much sense. It seems like it's an error in MSI's UEFI programming. It could be that they're using some sort of lookup table um, or whatever they're doing to try and calculate the V-Core. It's just it's not correct. So that was not... Uh, the best result for a combo strike because all it does is boost the temperature, boost the V-Core, and yield basically zero output for an extra 12% of power because we went up to about 112 watts from 100 watts with it just completely disabled on the MSI board. Versus Gigabyte, Combo Strike Level 3, so versus the X570 Master we normally review on, which does not use a form of this feature, at least as it's named in BIOS, uh, although it does run a higher V-Core natively, the MSI Combo Strike Level 3 on the Ace versus the X570 Master ends up producing anywhere between a 1% and a 3% performance uplift or improvement in those extended production style applications so like Blender, uh, Prem actually Premiere didn't show an uplift, so Blender, Chromium, and 7-Zip, we saw performance improvements 1% to 3% maximally versus an X570 Master. Not particularly worth it, only with the level 3 version of Combo Strike. And then in gaming, we saw 0 to uh, approximately 1% max versus uh, MSI's baseline, and really no meaningful change versus gigabytes. So it's within error for Combo Strike level 3, which is supposed to be the best one, and level 1 as well, uh, especially versus other motherboards but at least partially versus MSI's board with the feature completely turned off. So in terms of what it's actually doing in a concrete sense, it's a couple hundred megahertz with Combo Strike Level 3. That's a real change. It is doing something. It's just you won't see that materialized in many places. So um, again, production benchmarks show it, but gaming, not so much. And what that costs is somewhere between 6 and 12 watts on baseline. And for temperature, it's about 2 to 4 degrees Celsius when using a uh, Liquid Freezer 2 360 like we have back there at 100% fan speed, that's where we're seeing the 2 to 4 degrees Celsius increase depending on what level you're using. And that number will change a little bit too depending on if you're using a tower cooler, like a cheaper tower cooler, you're going to see more of an impact than on a high-end liquid cooler. So that's the feature. Basically, uh, it is not really worth downloading and updating your BIOS to use, especially because 
it might break other things that we aren't 100% sure of yet. It is technically a beta right now, but we, we probably wouldn't bother with it. But at least now you know not to go update your BIOS for a feature that doesn't really do that much and would just wipe all your settings anyway. Uh, and if you do update, just remember that when you update BIOS most of the time, the UEFI profiles you build, the overclocking profiles or user profiles, they will not survive a BIOS update. So don't go in there thinking, I'll just save my profile and restore it when I update it because you might not be able to pull it forward. It'll probably get blown away with the update. So just be aware of that. But that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. As always, if you want to support this type of content and our in-depth testing, you can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus where we publish some bonus written updates and behind the scenes videos, or you can go to store.gamersnexus.net to grab things like our shirts, our mod mats, mouse mats, toolkits, and other items. It all helps us in building out our lab and running in-depth testing on PC hardware. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more. We'll see you all next time.